So what we're looking at here is projectile launched off of a cliff. This is the most difficult type of a question. And there are a couple of strategies. The first strategy is to find the time of flight to the top, because you know at the top Vy is 0. Then find how long it takes to get all the way back down to the ground, and then add the two times together. Yeah. Yeah. Strategy two is to do it all at once. That's my preferred method. Yes, it involves a bit of math, but it's shorter. Strategy three, I don't recommend, but some kids like it. Alex, it's find the time to get to the top, double it. That'll give you the time to get to the bottom, back level with the cliff, and then figure out using your whatever your VY is right here, how fast you would fall to the very, very bottom at all three times together. Yeah. Mr. Duick prefers strategy number two. The goal for almost all of these Alexis is going to be find the time of flight. Once in a while, they'll give you the time, in which case the question falls apart, because most of our equations have a T in them. But if they don't give us the time of flight, almost always our first thing is going to be, all right, find T, how? Break things up into vertical and horizontal, like example 10. So example 10 says, find the flight time. We're launching off of a 60-meter high cliff in my wonderful diagram at an angle of 30 degrees with a velocity of 50 meters per second. Cassidy, are we off of a cliff? Say yes. Are we at an angle? Say yes. So I cannot use that 50 because it's neither horizontal nor vertical. First thing I have to do is I have to break this up into its components. Now, for me, I find this diagram a little bit small, so I'm going to redraw it. It's really up to you, but I'm big on big diagrams. I'm going to do this over here. There's, well, I'm going to try and do it with a straighter line than that, Mr. Duick. Oh, let's try that again. Hello. Back to here. There's the 50. And I'm going to break that up into horizontal. And vertical. Once again, why did I put an initial here, but not here? Yeah. Yeah, Vx isn't changing. Why? Because Ax is 0. Ay is changing. So I always want to reinforce that because, Kirsten, the most common mistake I see kids make is they want to put that negative 9.8, which is vertical, into the horizontal because they don't like that there's no acceleration. Like, please, I must. Howdy. Continue. I'm going to break this up into its components. Oh, and the angle here is 30 degrees. Right there. So I'm going to quickly label my triangle. Um, Spencer, this VX, opposite adjacent to hypotenuse. I think I agree, but I'd say it with more authority and certainty. This VY, opposite or, or hypotenuse. Opposite. That's the hypotenuse. Uh, what do you want to find first, Spencer? VY or VX? Doesn't matter, but... Which trig function are we going to use to find Vy? O and H, which trig function was that? You know, if you had a good teacher, he would have given you some kind of a stupid way last class, perhaps maybe, to remember that Vy was a specific trig function. Vy was uh, sine. Oh, Vy was sine. And there's probably some dumb way that you can remember that. If you had a good teacher, he might have told you that last class, but apparently you didn't have a good teacher last class. So, yeah, <laughs> I know the feeling, believe me. Um, yeah, as it turns out, Vy, well, it ends up being this. The sine of 30 ends up being... Vy over 50. So I mean, if I do a little cross multiply thingy, I end up with this. Vy equals 50 sine 30. I think the sine of 30 is 0.5. I think this is actually exactly 25. Someone check it. Yeah. 30 degrees I have memorized because it comes up so often. Spencer, redeem yourself. Which trig function am I going to use to find Vx? Which trig function has the A and the H in it? Cosine. In fact, you know what? It's going to be exactly this, but instead of sine, you know what's going to appear there? So I'm just going to not bother writing the fraction. I'm going to be clever. Just In, in my homework, I'll take shortcuts like this, right? And I'm going to go straight to cluing in. Hey, it's cos. 
Cosine of 30 is 0.866 for what it's worth, but I don't know what that times 50 is. 40 something. Y give it to me to four sig fig, because this is not my final answer, and I'm going to be using this to find other stuff. Oh, 43. Okay, so 43.30. 43.3 was actually the fourth sig fig. Fair enough. I will never use this 50. Now that I've used it to find by and vx, that 50 is dead to me as far as I'm concerned. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to draw a little line down the middle of my page. I'm going to call one side horizontal, and I'm going to call one side vertical. And as soon as I do that, Tyson, there's a second thing that I do that to me is almost a no-brainer. Like I want it to become a habit. I go AX equals and a vertical acceleration and horizontal acceleration, and I know both of these. Justin, what's the horizontal acceleration, kiddo? Too slow. What's the horizontal? It, it, it needs to be almost that quick. Horizontally, what's happening? What did we say? What's the horizontal acceleration? Zero. I get to fill that in. What's the vertical acceleration, Justin? Always? Negative 9.8, you said? Okay. Okay. I also emphasize that because now, hey, my question's no longer blank. I feel better. Got something written down. Oh, and there's two more things I can fill in. I can write VX, and I can write VY initial. It turns out VX, and I'm just reading this, is 43.3, and VY initial is 25. And right now, I can't go any further because I have two things in each column, and you can't solve anything in physics with only two pieces of information. I need something else. So I'm going to go back to the diagram. I'm going to look very, very carefully, and I'm going to say, what did they tell me that I haven't used yet? What did they tell me that I haven't used yet? Jess? DY? DY? What? Yeah, what is it as a number? I need to disagree with you. First of all, it is a vertical. I know I'm looking at the picture. Sometimes they'll give you DX, the range, which actually makes the question way, 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 way easier because your quadratic cancels. But if they give you dy, and it's a cliff, and it's an angle, we're going to be stuck with a quadratic equation. And dy, Jessica, redeem yourself, is not 60. What is it really? Why negative 60? I ended up below from where I started from. Now I would say, hey, which column do I know three things in? I'm going to solve this vertically. And I'm going to solve this by finding... time of flight. How? Well, I'm going to find an equation that has an A, a V, a D, and a T in it. And I'm actually going to cheat because I know I'm going to need more room. So I'm going to go zoom. Oh, isn't that cool? What equation has an A, a V, a D, and a T in it? Oh, specifically a VI, which... I guarantee one of them does. Yo. Ah, the old standard. The quadratic one. The squared. T squared. D equals VI T plus one half A T squared. And Chris, I'm just going to emphasize the fact that this is vertical to remind me to make sure I put the vertical stuff in there. It's funny, I didn't do that last block and I accidentally put the horizontal velocity right there because my brain, I, I trip on my brain. And I'm going to plug in all my numbers so I know that dy is negative 60, 25t minus 4.9t squared. What? Where'd the negative 4.9 come from? I took one extra step in my head. Yeah. H half A. Half of 9.8 is 4. Point, half of negative 9.8 is negative 4.9. That's one worth memorizing as a shortcut. Otherwise, you've got to rewrite the whole silly equation just to do that step. And ugh, let's, let's do that math in our head. What kind of an equation is this? It's quadratic. Alex, how do I know? the so squared. How do I solve the quadratic? What's the first thing I have to do before I do anything else? 
Make it equal to zero. Now, I have a personal preference. I hate it when my squared term is negative. So even though plussing this to this side will be the easiest, I'm actually going to plus this over and minus this over. I'm going to rewrite this as positive 4.9t squared plus 25t minus 60 equals 0. It'd be great if this factored. No, it's got decimals. It's not going to factor. In fact, Justin, that's going to be A. That's going to be B, and that's going to be C. Now put your pencils down. Who has a graphing calculator in this class? You may have a quadratic solver. If you have it, use it. Where is the quadratic solver, you ask? Two buttons to the to Start in the top left corner. Two buttons over, three buttons down. You have an app button? Yeah. Yes. Shouldn't it be what? Negative 25. Who gets the candy back there? It still does? Like I said, I trip on my brain all the time. It's all. Oh, boy. A timbit and a candy. Hold it back, girls. Hold it back. Back to my question. Uh, who has a graphing calculator? So if you press the app button, polysmolt. P O L Y S M L T. And you might have Polysmoke version 2, I don't know, which works fairly similarly. But if you run it, and then I think you have to press any key, and then I think it says uh, option 1 is polynomial root finder. And then somewhere along the way, it asks you for the degree or the power at 2, and then see if you can figure it out from there. Uh, go ahead. Now, if you're going to use that on a quiz or a test, I'll give you 0, unless you write down the quadratic formula right underneath this. Then I have to assume that you use the quadratic formula. I'll give you full marks because that's how they do in provincial. And I'm okay with the technology. Some of you may have a scientific calculator that has a quadratic solver. If you do, great. Use it with the same provision that I just told Nav. Uh, write down the quadratic equation. Some of you do not. If you're good with the quadratic equation, it's the fastest way to get the answer. If you're a little shaky on the quadratic equation, I will, in just a second, show you an alternate method that does not require you to use the quadratic formula, and it gets you there in two extra lines. Okay? But for now, I would do something like this. Somewhere off in the margin, for me, maybe right here, I would write x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Do I have any German exchange students in this class? No? Okay. Because they in Europe, they use a different thing with p's and q's and a different method. So I always have to explain that. In fact, I think t is going to be positive 25, because it's negative b, and b is already negative, plus or minus the square root of negative 25 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And I know that 2 times 4.9 is 9.8, which is a number that's fairly familiar to me. You used your solver? What'd you get? Uh, by the way, ignore the negative answer, right? That's wrong. I think it's wrong. So as I said, ignore the negative answer. Sesame Street is brought today by the word ignore. As in, most of the time, I will choose to ignore you. OK. Uh, what's the positive answer, please? Uh, can you give it to me to three sig figs? Because we're going to use, we don't want to round this off. We're going to use it to find other stuff, too. I would definitely go 6.88. Now, I deliberately haven't typed this in up here because I find if I type it in, too many of you just copy what I'm typing and don't know how to type this into your calculator yourselves. So if you did this and you didn't get 6.88, hit me up later and I'll show you how to type it in with, by the way, you need a bracket there. 
and you need a bracket there inside the square root and a bracket there, another bracket there, but I'll let you figure that out yourselves. Or you can do this without using the quadratic formula. Oh, by the way, now as soon as I did that, I would go running over here and I would say, oh, horizontally, the time is also 6.88 seconds because the time it takes for me to hit the ground vertically, that's how far, how long I'm moving horizontally for. Right? How can you do this without using the quadratic formula? Simple. Put your pencils down and look up. Unfortunately, I don't have enough room to show this step because I need room here to find the time to the top and I'm running out of space. I'm going to try and do this a little bit small. I'm going to go like this. Or, instead of finding t, which is what I wrote down here right away, you could find vy final. How fast is going vertically at impact? Now, can I find it? Let's see. Is there an equation that has a v initial, d, and v final in it? Is there an equation that has a v initial, d, and v final in it? Is there, Simran? Now that you're done, Yoni. Which one? The squared one. The squared one. Which conveniently actually has vy final by itself already. Kind of nice. Uh, well, it has vy final squared by itself already. So if you want to, you can go like this. When I type that in, the initial was 25 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 60. Negative, whoop, try that again. The 6 didn't go, did it? Negative 60. I get 1801 square root. And I get VY final is 42.44. And I'm wrong. Why am I technically wrong? Why is VY final not 42.44? Alex, okay, I'm going to have to remember that it's going down. It's negative. In fact, those of you that are in Math 12, you've already heard me rant about when you square root both sides, plus or minus, this is one time where you actually want the minus, not the plus. Why does that help, Andrew? Well, now that I have V final, I know V initial, I know A, I can find T. Is there an equation that has V final, V initial, A, and T in it? Which one? Get the T by itself. Which is one we've been doing almost since grade 10. If you go T equals VF minus VI over A. If you go, bracket, negative 42.44 minus 25, there's my V final, my V initial, divided by negative 9.8. There it is, 6.88 like NAV got. Did I use the quadratic equation? Nope. And it was probably only a line or two longer. I don't care which method you use. I use the quadratic because I've got solvers built into any calculator that I purchase, and I'm lazy that way. On my answer keys, what you'll often see if you're looking online is I'll write, use QF, which stands for quadratic formula, but you won't see any work, which means I cheated and used my solver because I was doing it at home late at night, and I just didn't feel like showing every step. Fine. Anyways. There are two ways to get that 6.88. With the quadratic formula or find VY final, negative, and then solve for T. Meanwhile, we did what they asked. We found T. What does part B want us to find? Spencer, what was the last word you said? The word top, would that imply vertical or horizontal here, do you think? I think we're going to tackle this vertically as well. We have our vertical data listed here, A, V, I, and D. 
I know one more thing. Oh, I don't know D actually. D is where I ended up at the top. I don't know how high I am. Right now, I know AY is negative 9.8 and VY initial is 25. But I do know one more thing. At the top, what else do I know? Jess. <coughs> VY final is 0. Does that mean you're stopped at the top? No. It means you're moving horizontally still, Eric. But for a split second vertically, you've come to a stop. And I want to find time. Do I have an equation that has A, V, I, V, F, and T in it? Why, yes, I do. In fact, you know what? It's the same one that Andrew read to us about 30 seconds ago. It's sitting right here in red. It's going to be VF minus VI over A. The time to the top is going to be 0 minus 25 all over negative 9.8. I'm sorry, Christian, for writing so small. What is 0 minus 25 divided by negative 9.8? Um, how many of you want to do good in this course? All of you raise your hands, I hope. Can I give you some advice as someone who's taught this course now for quite a while? The most common mistakes by far that I see on test, tests are stupid calculator mistakes. Kids have written all the correct numbers and they have the wrong answer. Almost inevitably, those are kids who during class don't bother trying to get the same answer as me on their calculator because this is when you should be making your stupid calculator mistakes, when it doesn't count. And then on the test, you know what you're doing. That's my way of saying you should all be typing these in and seeing that you know, especially as soon as we get to the more complicated stuff, you want to get good at your calculators. It drives me crazy the number of kids that have all the right stuff written, wrong answer. What do we get? Tyson, 2.55, anybody else? Yeah, I got nodding. 2.55 seconds to the top. Oh, and how long was it in the air for grand total? What did we say? It's highlighted. 6.88. Oh, so you also now know how long it was falling down for uh, 6.88 minus 2.5, if, if I asked that. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff we could do now. What's the key for dealing with a cliff? Components. Displacement is negative, and you're either going to end up using the quadratic equation, or if you find Vy final, uh, it's negative 2 because it's on its way down. Next page. Is it turn the page for you guys, or is it next page over? So you still have all the data on your page? Good, 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 good. These are the other questions they like to ask. C, find the range. When they say find the range, what they're really saying is find dx, the horizontal displacement. So in my horizontal column, I have a, v, t, 6.88, and they want me to find d. What's an equation that has those four things in it? Hmm. Sabina, louder? D equals V, I, and I'll put X's on everything, T plus 1 half AX, T squared. And there's something really cool. Look, 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 look. Why can I do that? Because the horizontal acceleration is zero. Most common mistake, kids want to put a negative 9.8 in there because they're like, what's the accelerate? Oh, 9.8. No, not horizontally. In fact, the range is just going to be Vx, which was 43 something. What was it? 43.3 times 6.88. That one, hopefully, you don't you can get on your calculator times 43.3. Hey, I got the 6.88 stored on my calculator. That's convenient. 209, oh, three sig figs, 298 units, meters.
The last one they'll ask, and this is fairly challenging, is the impact velocity. Although sometimes they'll say, find the final velocity. Now often when they say that, kids go, well, zero, stupid. No, no, not after it hits the ground. Final velocity right when it hits the ground. Okay? I'm going to argue that as a picture, the final velocity looks like this. I'm going to argue, Kirsten, it's coming at a pretty steep angle. Not vertical, though, because it's still moving sideways. Does that make sense? Launching from a cliff, I think you'd hit at kind of a steep angle. Not only that, Kirsten, I'm going to argue that we can break this up into that and that. So far, so good. Where this is my horizontal velocity of 43.3, because it never changes. And this is the final vertical velocity just before impact, which conveniently, I think I figured this out on the previous page when I showed you the second method of finding time without using the quadratic formula. It forced me to find the vertical velocity, the final vertical velocity just before impact. What was the final vertical? It was something in the 40s as well, if I recall. Sorry? 42.44. Technically negative, except since I've got a vector arrow pointing down, I'm going to ditch the negative. It shows up in my diagram. And I think this is impact velocity. How can I find the magnitude of the impact velocity? Math 8. Pythagoras. And you know what? I think this here is going to be my angle theta. Oh, this actually isn't too bad if you've done the setup ahead of time. Now, if you didn't know VY final, this is where you would have to crunch the numbers and find VY final. But we already did, conveniently. Uh, it's going to be V impact squared equals 43.3 squared plus 42.44 squared. V impact equals 43.3 squared plus 42.44 squared. Isn't it negative? Well, technically this is negative, but when you square a negative, what's going to happen anyhow? So you know what? The, the vector arrow has the negative contained in it, so who cares? Uh, square root 60.6 meters per second. Now that's the magnitude. Direction. This angle here Alex, but not Alex or Alex. Alex, what trig function opposite adjacent or hypotenuse based on that angle there? What's this one? I agree with you. What about this one? Which trig function has the A and the O in it? What you do in Hawaii, Tam. Absolutely. In fact, Alex, I'm going to say this. The angle is going to be the inverse tangent, right, of opposite over adjacent. I went straight to writing what we're going to do on our calculator. And remember the symbol for inverse on your calculator is that stupid negative 1. So can someone go shift tan of that? What do we get for an angle? By the way, Cassidy, are both these two numbers close to each other? The angle is going to be close to 45 degrees because this is nearly isosceles. 44.44. Forty-four point four degrees. What of what? Well, here's the problem. I can't really say south of east. Now, if you said that, I wouldn't take marks off. But I'm going to suggest to you that's not north. That's not south. On a map, yes, up is north. But in real life, up is up. Down is down. So if you said uh, south of east, I'd give it to you. But here's how we actually write this. We would say 44 degrees below the horizontal. 
That's how you draw an angle itzel from here down. You say it's below the horizontal. What would I say if it was from here up, do you think? Above the horizontal. Yep. That's how we label diagrams from the side. North and south doesn't quite work. And that's how we do cliffs. Components, negative displacement if it's a vertical one. Quadratic formula or find VY final. Negative. But you need to find T somehow. Which is the best method? Probably depends on your calculator, to be quite honest. Next page. Example 11 says, find the flight time using the quadratic formula. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to say to you, find the flight time any way you want. I don't care. Andrew, cliff? Angle? Is there an angle? Just say yes. Then I'm going to break this into its components. I'm never going to use that 35 once I've done the components. And I'm going to go horizontal and vertical, step by step. It's a fair chunk of writing, but it's fairly meticulous systematic if you're careful. This diagram's too small for me again, Kirsten. I'm going to draw a little bit bigger, like that. 35. Here's VX. Here's VY initial. And this was 20 degrees. Spencer, it would be great if there was some stupid way that I could get to a shortcut for what the heck VY was. What was VY? Oh, you're saying that VY initial is 35 sine 20, and VX is 35 cos 20? Why? I actually agree with you. I know it's amazing. I have no idea what this is. 35 sine 20. Donk. I'll go 11.97, carry an extra sig fig or two. And I'll go 32.89. Yes. Now what? Horizontal, vertical, AX, zero, AY, negative 9.8, VX, 32.89, VY initial, I scroll down to 11.97. What's this question asking me to find? Time? It means they better give me something else. Oh, they gave me the vertical displacement. Justin, what's the vertical displacement? Negative 20. Which means I'm going to find T here. Now, I'm going to pause and say, try this next part. Try finding the time on your own. You can either use the quadratic formula or you can find vy final squared and square root and negative and then use t equals vf minus vi over a dy equals viy t plus one half ay T squared negative 20 equals 11.97 T squared. x equals negative b plus or minus a squared 
2a squared minus 4a is 0 over 2a. And since I paid money for my quadratic solver, why don't I use it? Oops, wrote that thing wrong. Let's try that again, Mr. Dave. Square root. Minus what would be I eleven point nine seven. Or if you find VY final first, I found VY final was negative 23.13. And sure enough, when I typed in the numbers there, I also got negative 3.58. Either way, it got me there just fine. If you didn't get that, I'll come around and check. You're probably making, usually, it's a calculator zig mistake. projectiles. That's the concept of projectiles. All we're going to do for the next few days is look at weird and bizarre, trickier questions. Like, what if a projectile hits a wall vertically along the way and sticks? How high will it stick? Oh, figure that out. Stuff like that. How many got the 3.58? I'm just curious. Most of you. Most of the rest, I'm going to guess calculator glitch. So, I'll put this back up in a second. But, homework. I already assigned one and two, yes? So I can now say, hey, you can do number three as well. Five and six I haven't yet talked about. That's finding the velocity, magnitude, and direction at a certain time. But I'll give you a hint. Remember when we found the impact velocity? We had to add two velocities together. If you want to find the velocity, let's say after two seconds, Ashley, it's going to be your horizontal plus whatever Vy is after two seconds. The resultant is your velocity after two seconds at an angle. So I'll be doing that next class. But I'm always curious to see who can figure it out on their own and impress me. Uh, no, no. 10 is good and 11 is good. We're nearly done. I only actually have about two more lessons and I'm done the unit. So I'm also going to say to you, remember the great big review that I gave out, the one that was called the Ultimate Kinematics Review? I'm going to start to say to you, if you finish this homework, you can start working on the review and these are the questions that you're now capable of doing. 1 to 4, 6 to 8, 11 to 17, 19 to 28, and 30 and 31. I'll leave that up there for a few minutes in just a second. But first, well, the lesson is done. Right click. 